Democratic leader. I ask unanimous consent the quorum be dispensed with. Without objection. Now, before I begin, Madam President, I want to remind senators to wear a mask as much as possible on the floor. I personally take my mask off when I'm addressing the chair, so long as other senators or staff are not nearby. Otherwise, a mask should be worn at all times on the floor. This is not only for the safety of other senators. This is for the safety of our staffs, everyone who works here on the floor, and everyone who works here in this building, as well as setting the right example for the American people. Now on Judy Shelton. Today, the Senate will vote on, a nomination, on the nomination of Judy Shelton to serve as a member of the Board of Directors of the Federal Reserve. Ms. Shelton is, without a doubt, one of the most unqualified nominees I have ever seen for our nation's central bank. When her nomination first came before the Senate Banking Committee, a former Republican aide to a senator on the Banking Committee said that she was so unqualified and so far out of the mainstream that the, quote, idea of even calling Ms. Shelton as a witness for something was beyond the pale. That's a former Republican aide saying Ms. Shelton wasn't qualified to be a witness in a committee hearing, let alone a nominee to the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. And it's not hard to understand why. For years, Ms. Shelton has advocated for the resurrection of the gold standard, a long since discarded policy that in part led to the Great Depression. She has questioned the independence of the Fed, and beyond that has even questioned whether the Fed should exist. Ms. Shelton has also suggested that we put an end to federal deposit insurance, an institution that has protected American savings since the 1930s. That is why over 130 of the nation's top economists, including seven Nobel laureates, have opposed her nomination, as have countless alumni of the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. Ms. Shelton's views have another strange quality. They seem to change when it's politically convenient. When President Obama was in office, Ms. Shelton harangued the Fed to increase interest rates, despite the economic downturn. But in 2017, when President Trump took office, Ms. Shelton abruptly switched her position and argued that the Fed should reduce rates, in her words, as fast, as efficiently, as expeditiously as possible. It may surprise few to learn that she was an advisor to President Trump's 2016 campaign she has defended his candidacy, his policies, and encouraged world banks to hold international conferences at mar a lago Imagine, a nominee for the Federal Reserve, which is supposed to be an independent body. I have fought both Democrats and Republicans when they have tried to interfere with the independence of the Fed, but Ms. Shelton doesn't seem to care about it at all, so that, that might be the most concerning thing about her, nomination, her stunning lack of independence. The Federal Reserve Board must make, must make decisions on an objective economic analysis and judgment, not whatever is best for one party or one, occupancy, or one occupant of the Oval Office. That's why terms on the Federal Board last 14 years. We are supposed to trust Federal Reserve governors to be neutral arbiters, no matter which party is in power in Washington. We're supposed to trust that everyone who serves on the Fed is first and foremost well-qualified and truly independent. But unfortunately, Judy Shelton is neither. Ms. Shelton has shown herself to be an economic weather vane, pointing whichever direction she believes the partisan winds are blowing. Every single Democrat will oppose her nomination today. I understand a few of our Republican colleagues will oppose her nomination as well. The question is, will enough of our colleagues on the other side stand up and do the right thing today. Members of this chamber have stood up before to prevent President Trump from putting unqualified partisan advocates on the Federal Reserve. During these final few weeks of the Trump presidency, it's time to do it again. I plead with my Republican colleagues for the sake of an economy that is hurting from COVID, for the sake of our future economy and its growth, to reject Ms. Shelton's nomination on COVID. By all rights, the Senate should not be spending its time this week on so many nominees, especially such unqualified nominees, while COVID-19 is surging throughout the country. The urgent need for another relief bill has been confronting the Senate since March of this year. The Republican leader put the Senate on pause, as he said, all summer, 
while the virus got worse and worse. And when he finally decided it was time to do another bill, he crafted a partisan, emaciated proposal that fell drastically short of what is needed to address a burgeoning health and economic crisis. Now, President-elect Biden has urged the Senate to pass a comprehensive bill that actually meets the needs of the American people. He pointed to the HEROES Act. And that's the right focus. We need a comprehensive bill that meets the needs of the American people. But, of course, we will want to sit down and negotiate with our Republican colleagues. The Republican leader should come to the table and negotiate with Democrats on a bipartisan COVID relief bill with a bipartisan process that addresses all of the challenges we now face. I yield the floor and note the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Alexander. 